I like to think of generators as these functions with multiple return values. If you had a generator function with 100 lines and every 20 lines there was a separate return value, then what you could do is you could call this function, get it to return the first value and then later on call it a second time and the function would pick up where it left off and give you your second return value. So it would remember the code it had already run. It would remember where it was, so it would remember it's already given you one value, so it's going to give you the second one. This has lots of uses, but the best way to go through that is with examples. So let's go through that now. Right, so starting off with our first example, we've got your simple hello world. Now here is where we're creating our generator function. This asterisk symbol over here, in front of the function keyword, is what marks this as a generator function. So that's what says, this is a special kind of function. We're doing something different here. Get ready. Now, after this, you've got your normal function declaration. We're calling it hello world, giving it our brackets. And then inside this function, you've got this yield keyword. And this yield keyword is basically a synonym for return. So you're saying, when this function is called, I want to return this. Now, the thing with generator functions is they don't return the value straight up. So here's how it works. The generator function up here returns a generator object. And this generator object is a kind of iterator which means you can iterate over all of its values. Now in this hello world example, we're just returning a single string of text. But if we were returning more values, then you could iterate over your separate values. Now, if you've watched the iterators video on this channel, you'll know that every iterator has this next method. And this next method is going to give you the next value in your sequence. So in an array, it would give you the next value in that array. And in our case, it's going to give us the next value that is being yielded by this generator function. Because we've only got one value, it's going to yield what up world with the done being false for the first call of next. And then the next time you call next, the value is going to be undefined because we don't have a second return value and the done is going to be true. So that means iteration is done. You can stop calling next. Now moving on to the second example, we're going to cover how you can use a generator function to return multiple values. So we're creating the function in the same way. You've got function plus asterisk and then here we're calling it ABCs and inside it we're yielding three characters yield A, yield B and yield C. Now remember when I said that calling this function is going to return a type of iterator that means we can use this iterator in the same way we would an array. So in this case we're using it in a for of loop. So for each letter of whatever our ABCs is returning we're going to console.log that letter. And that is going to console.log three separate values, A, B, and C, one on each line. Now in a similar fashion, you can also use it with a spread operator. We're basically turning our generator function into an array. So we're saying take whatever this ABC's function is returning, that's our iterator, and we want to take all of its yielded values and we want to put them all in an array, which we're then logging out. And that moves us on to our third example. So this one's a bit more how you might actually use generators in real life. So here we have our function declaration, we're making a generator function and we're calling it map. Now we're taking two parameters for this function. One is called array and one we're calling map function. And inside here, we're using a for loop and saying for each item in array, we want to yield the map function on the item. Now what this is essentially doing is it's running the map method on each item in an array, which you're thinking right now, why not just use the map method? It's an array. It has a built-in map method. Yes, but with this, because yield is only going to be running while you're pulling data from the other side, you can basically break up the array into pieces and run the map function on chunks of the array at a time. So if you had a really computation heavy map function, then instead of bogging your program down by running that function on every single value in the array all at once, you could break it up and do it on five or six values at a time. And that way you're not doing all of this computation all at once that might not even be needed. Now for example number four. So here we're using a generator function to generate IDs. Again, you've got your generator function declaration. We're calling it generate ID. And inside we're initializing an ID variable to one. Now after that, we're using a while true loop. Now this is a way to have an infinite loop. And in any other scenario, an infinite loop is a big no-no. It's gonna bog down your program and run infinitely. It's in the name. But with generators, if you have your yield keyword inside your loop, the infinite loop is only running infinitely while you're pulling data from it. So down here, we're creating a generator object using our generate ID function. And then we're calling generator object dot next. Now, every time we call next, it's going to increment our ID by one and it's going to return the next value. So example use cases might be if you are dynamically generating objects and you want to give each object a unique ID, then you could use this generate ID function to do that. 
and it would never run out of values and it would never repeat a value. Now there's just a handful of other extra bits to mention. The first is that you could have several generator object instances made from the same generator function. So if you're familiar with object oriented programming, function is kind of acting like a class and you're using it to create objects. Now this is just a few basic examples of what generators are capable of, but generators are building blocks and you decide what you're going to build with them. That's all from me, thanks for watching and see you guys next time.